Hello, I'm Larry Diamond. I'm director of the Center on Democracy, Development, and the Rule of Law at Stanford University. I'm very excited to be part of this online course that's coming from the University of Oslo. Uh, I think it's very important to think about what works in development and not to yield to the cynicism and despair that nothing works, uh, that development assistance is all a waste, and that countries are condemned to indefinite poverty. First, let me stress <clears throat> why democracy matters to development. There's, uh, there are many assumptions, and they've been in the literature for a long period of time, that democracy is irrelevant or even a heavy burden uh, in terms of development aspirations, that uh, if you want to get to rapid development, do it the way China did it and have a dictatorship. Uh, that just doesn't square with particularly the recent evidence which is showing from the poorest region of the world, namely Sub-Saharan Africa, that democracy can actually be a resource for economic development. The work, for example, of the former uh, chief economist uh, at the U.S. Agency for International Development, now a distinguished professor at Georgetown University, Steve Radelay, uh, shows that the countries that have done best in producing relatively sustained and vigorous economic growth in Africa have mainly, not exclusively, uh, since the early 1990s, uh, been electoral democracies. And in fact, the democracies of Sub-Saharan Africa more recently have had better overall performance in delivering uh, sustained and rapid economic growth and human development and better governance than the authoritarian regimes. Authoritarianism is a big risk. It can deliver um, some development miracles like China, Taiwan, Korea, but it has more often uh, delivered uh, some cataclysmic uh, development failures like the former Zaire Zimbabwe, Burma, which slipped into several decades of autarky uh, and uh, prolonged uh, ethnic and regional violence. Uh, Burma's had the longest running civil war in the world. Uh, <clears throat> and you see a number of countries in the world which, uh, lacking any institutional constraints on the arbitrary power of rulers, uh, settle into uh, not just authoritarianism, but really predatory dictatorship. One reason why uh, democracy is a good bet and often a better bet uh, to deliver sustained development uh, is that it does a better job of controlling corruption and producing accountable, open, and transparent government. We know that there's a correlation, it's far from perfect, but there is a correlation, particularly among <clears throat> developing countries, uh, between the extent of democracy and other governance indicators, such as rule of law, control of corruption, and so on. This makes sense not only because democracies have embedded formal institutions to constrain the arbitrary power of rulers, but also because um, democracies allow freedom, freedom of the press, freedom of civil society to organize and monitor government and give voice to people's concerns, uh, which um, makes it much more likely that institutions of accountability will work to um, produce better public administration. Uh, and more robust institutions to uh, monitor government spending and control corruption. There's another important dimension to democracy, which is having a very significant impact now in Latin America. Uh, and that is democracy empowers citizens to organize, to express voice, and to demand responsiveness from government that it meet their needs. Uh, and as democracy settles in, this happens not only uh, with middle class people uh, who have the education and resources to get on the internet or um, contact a public official or protest in front of the government, but with poor people as well. And as poor people organize and mobilize to vote, 
um, they are able to use their political power to demand that government respond to their needs, the biggest need of which is um, effective public services and uh, income support to reduce and hopefully alleviate poverty. And we are seeing now in a number of Latin American countries, uh, including Chile, uh, Brazil, Peru, Mexico, the provision of income support programs, conditional cash transfer programs, focused on low-income people, pretty carefully on low-income people, uh, and these are achieving some significant reductions in poverty and reductions in inequality in the region of the world, Latin America, that has had historically the highest levels of inequality in the world. And these uh, conditional cash transfer programs are really quite ingenious because they achieve two things at once. First of all, they provide the truly needy with income support so they can get food, nutrition, um, uh, better access to health and education, uh, income generating opportunities that might flow from modest amounts of cash that can be applied to generate initial investments for small scale enterprise. And second of all, the conditional end of it is that in order to get these cash transfer payments, mothers have to commit to inoculate their children, to keep them in school. Uh, if they're preg pregnant, often there's a requirement that they make one a prenatal visit uh, at least for a checkup to ensure that the baby will be healthy and a postnatal visit as well. And so this generates a whole infrastructure or system of other services and other commitments on the part of the be poor and behavioral changes on the part of the poor that have a synergistic quality to them in terms of everything working together to reduce poverty. So when you give the poor voice to a degree that democracy is much better able to do than authoritarianism, when you have a civil society that's energized, when people can secure and defend their rights uh, through civil society action, through um, pressure and particip on and participation in political parties, uh, through the work and exposure of the mass media and monitoring organizations, uh, then the promise of democracy can really be tapped into not just to give people a vote, but to actually improve their material well-being and the quality of their lives. We know this isn't uh, uniquely uh, the ability of democracies and that sometimes you get miracle performance from very determined authoritarian leaders but um, if we can show, and the recent evidence certainly shows, that at a minimum democracy is not a burden, that uh, electoral democracies and even more so liberal or higher quality democracies can perform at least as well as uh, dictatorships in delivering broad-based development and improvement in human well-being, then of course democracy is to be preferred because it also provides other dimensions of the full measure of development in terms of um, political and civil liberties. And political dignity, freedom from fear, a rule of law, protection for people's um, human rights to uh, speak, uh, to worship, uh, to organize, to protest as they wish, uh, are, um, you know, not just a luxury, uh, as the great Indian economist Amartya Sen has written, poor people need these rights every bit as much as uh, wealthier people, and these rights have been very instrumental in helping poor people secure their material interests as well.